It wasn't on well. You get praise going on to the most high we out by way of Yahushua Mashiach called Master, King, and Savior. Let's get to John chapter 5, verse 39. Hey, stay in the We look at John or Yukonon chapter 5, verse 39, and it says this. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of Allahim in you. Well, let's come back over here to this Exodus chapter 21. And we'll look at Deuteronomy 15 a little bit, which mentions the same thing. You know, Brother Troy touched on this a little bit the other day. We talked about it a little bit. But we're going to delve into it a little bit more deeply because especially with certain things that have been said to me on, on certain things. You know, we've actually been through Exodus 21 before. Y'all remember that? You remember that? Y'all remember when we looked at Exodus 21 about uh, what that meant if a man uh, take another wife or food her raiment or her duty of marriage, shall not, he shall not diminish. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. I'm just sitting back wondering because sure, I wonder where I got that from. And you know why I ended up preaching about that? Because somebody seen that and tried to say, see the book speaks about slavery. And we like, bro, that's talking about a mosh, y'all. But look at verse 1, though. Yeah. Now these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. If thou buy a Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve, and the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. So when we look at that seventh year, you know what that seventh year is? What happened in that seventh year? Jubilee. That's Jubilee, right? Let's sit back and look at... Uh, who know, Troy, what off the top that does Jubilee mean in Hebrew, sir? Yeah. Uh, 49? No, no, that's... That's Pentecost, sir. That's Pentecost. Jubilee is something wrong. It's a number. It's like seven. It's like... Well, let me look and see. Jubilee is like a number. Well, we're going to find out. He, he don't said know. 50. He said he don't know. <laughs> he ain't good as we Cor thought. I think Corey know what it means. Corey just said something about 52. Yeah, I think it is like 50 or something like that. Well, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, I know it's the 50th year, but see, but I'm talking about the actual word. Yeah. Jubilee. And in Hebrew for Jubilee, you see that the word that we have here is, let me make sure I pronounce it right, Yovel. And you know what it actually means? A ram, a ram's horn, a trumpet, a cornet. Jubilee year marked by the blowing of cornets. So that means that to announce the freedom, that means a horn's got to be blown. Now, why would that be important for us? The trumpet going to be back, but we got to sit back and look at it. He said a Hebrew servant in that seven year, the year of Jubilee, where he'll get his freedom, right? That's what we know these people get seven years to erase your debt when you file for bankruptcy, because they got it from right here. But let's sit back and look at the horn being blown. In the 27th chapter of Matthew. Matter of fact, just make it the 6th, 15th chapter of Mark because I do not have the 27th chapter of Matthew in this book. And we'll make it 15 and 29. Well, your mama done stripped your butt naked in here, girl. She was sweat. Yeah, it was toasted outside, boy. That Nor'east nor 11, it went right back to 80. It says in Mark 15 to 29. It's called Goldilocks, so. yeah, Goldilocks well. That's, that's what the white man on the news said. That's what he called it. Goldilocks well. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. He said, they that passed by, on, passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, thou that destroyed the temple and build it in three days. Save thyself and come down from the tree. Likewise also the chief priests mock and said amongst themselves with the scribes, he saved others, himself he cannot save. You sit back and look at it, right? If you're a Hebrew servant, that means you're a slave. Somebody got to free you. He's saying you saved others from they from they from they from they uh servitude, but he can't save himself. He said, Let Hamashiach, the Malik of Yasharal, or the king of Yasharal, descend now from the tree, that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. See, that that son. That's the whole problem with our people right now. They say, we won't believe, show it to them. Even though he had been showing it to you the whole time before he even got up on the tree. But now, if he come up off of this, now I believe. And the reason why I mention that is, is you can show people many mighty works. You can show them a lot of things. 
that does not mean that they're going to believe. You know what I'm talking about? See, I'll show you what I mean when I say this. Hold this Mark 15 while we hold it. Uh, Exodus 21. And let's just look at this Numbers 14 again real fast. That's something that he told. If Numbers 14 ain't sufficient, I know Deuteronomy chapter 6 will be. As a matter of fact, Deuteronomy chapter 6 is ringing in my mind. So after I look at that number 14, we'll just go around there and look at that too. Give me a second. Number 14 and about uh, 20, 21. Number 14 and 21. And we'll look at Deuteronomy 6 and about verse 13 as well. Because that's coming to my brain. He said, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the esteem of Yahuwah. Because all those men which have seen my esteem and my miracles, which I did in Mishraim and in this wilderness, have tempted me now these ten times and have not hearkened to my voice. Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. So the thing, the thing that was going on is these people provoked the man, they tempted the man. And why did they do it? Because everything that he said, they didn't hear it. The reason why I mentioned this here because we were slaves in service in Mishraim, and he brought you up out of that. He purchased you, and it cost you nothing. It didn't cost you nothing. You know what I'm saying? It didn't cost you nothing to be freed from being a bondman. All you had to do was hear and do. That's all it cost you. That's what people don't like to do. Let me look at the Deuteronomy 6 and 13 while we're around here. Because that came to my head. Let me see what it says. 6 and 13, gentlemen. 6 and 13. That's the key thing that we have to sit back and look at. This is what I'm sitting back telling you, right? Because no matter what, one thing for certain, right? Like, you know one of the reasons why a lot of people didn't want to hear the word from Paul? Because they were sitting back thinking about what he did before he was converted. And they weren't looking at what the man was saying was correct. They were looking at what he did before time. That didn't change the fact that what he was preaching was right. They didn't want to hear that. You know what I'm saying? Some of them were scared of him, rightfully so. Because if you just heard about a man slaughtering and killing people, and then he coming like he on the other side, you're going to trust him off the rip. Would you trust him? That's, that's natural. That's understandable. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, they'll find any reason to discredit. Well, they'll be more looking at the individual instead of listening to what's being said. Like you have some people, man, like my brother, my brother, something, something. He was like, yeah, man, I have people check out your stuff, man. He said, they say you say nigga a lot, man. They might, you know what I'm saying? He said, I know, because you're your daddy's son. Because, you know, my dad is hard You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't be able to tell it now because of the situation he in, but shoot, he was in the hospital cussing the nurses out. Nurses came and told him, man, your dad around here cussing at us. You know what I'm saying? But some people could get offended by it, and they'll look for any reason to say, I don't want to hear it. You know what I'm talking about? Like somebody could have heard us sitting around here talking about Gucci and all this old other stuff and these people around here blowing booty and rim jobs and all this stuff. I don't want to hear nothing he got to say. Because they're going to focus on that. And they might have heard, they might have heard, they might have agreed with everything. Let's just say we was already preaching. They might have agreed with everything they heard. And then they heard it talking about, yeah, I just seen this white man. They talking about he, he got almost got fired on the radio because he let somebody give him a rim job on the air. Like this man is on the air getting his booty lit. <laughs> and, and I don't know what, but the worst part was the only reason why I knew about it because somebody, you know how they had a, the picture with the story? Somebody had a picture of this happening. So, like, uh, <laughs> so you know how you be scrolling and you scroll and you like, whoa. That must have been serious radio. You're like, whoa. Like, you, you don't want to see that. Like, like, there was a time period where dudes would share, share videos. And pictures of people having sex with animals. And then you know, sometimes when you scroll on Facebook, the video might start playing but with no sound. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So then you turn around looking at like my nigga. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all don't know this song, but I used to listen to MOP a lot. They had a song called My Nigga He'll Fix It. And that's what you're gonna tell me. My nigga, he'll why in the world did you share that? Because you had to watch it before you shared it. What made you think that anybody wanted to see a grown person have sex with a horse? Now we got to kill her and the horse. The horse ain't did nothing. He don't know nothing about nothing. I mean, he did something. He don't know this. He doesn't know that he's not supposed to have sex with a human being. But your nasty behind did. 
You know what I'm saying? You sharing pictures of white women having sex with dogs. They talk about these white people, Esau, such a beast. They so wicked. Nigga, you wicked because you watched it. You look for it. You know what I'm saying? Regardless how you found it. You watched it, then shared it, hoping that other people would watch it. You are a perverted young man, sir. You are a perverted young man. Ain't no way around that. You know what I'm saying? Then it'd be funny too. You'll see, like, this is what I be tripping on. You know what I be doing sometimes? I might see people like you. You know how they say, do you know these people? Then you'll sit back and you'll look at mutual friends. And it could be somebody that's real inappropriate. Male or female, you wonder yourself, like, who on my friends list is following this nigga? So then I've got to be curious. I want, I'll be seeing a lot of nigga for to be in the word, following a lot of half naked women. You know what I'm talking about? And be liking they, I used to see them. See, they used to do it like they said they don't do it that much no more. Them niggas used to like them girl pictures and it would come up in your feed that you like somebody's picture. Yep. Mm -hmm. On the popular. So the nigga, that not even on the popular, it just would come up. Troy likes such and such photo. Yeah, I'm not the popular. I just he talking about on Facebook. On Facebook, but, but, but niggas be exposed because I used to see people. I, they, I guess they don't do it no more. Niggas be like this here, boy, you liking a lot of them butt nigga hoes, boy. I thought you was in the truth, huh? I thought he said he was in the truth. He was truthfully in there looking at that lotion like this here, boy, you better than this. Stop. You're better than this. Boy, look here, man. I done seen some crazy stuff. These niggas, why? Deuteronomy 6 and 13. I've been seeing the text. These people are crazy. But where that stuff come in at is because they didn't do what they made. They didn't hear it. Because if they heard it, they'd be like, you know what? I ain't going to do that. Or I ain't going to sit back and look at this or do this. Or at least on, at the bare minimum. Because you know what? It's here, right? And you know in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, everybody like to mention, he said, if my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then I will hear. Well, the only way you can humble yourself is what? If you heard the word. Like when we go look at Nehemiah, when they came up out of Babylon and they were having that first tabernacles and them people heard the word, they wept because their ears were open. They realized how wrong they were, which goes back to what I was talking to y'all about last week. Them that's of a humble of and contrite heart, they find out that they wrong. Even, I mean, when you do something, you already know you, you already know you done made a mistake. But when the most high bring it to your face, you done made a mistake. How will you respond? Now, y'all done seen some people yourself that when something brought to them and they wrong, their response is hostile. You know what I'm saying? They fight with it instead of sitting back looking at, you know, hey, I need to, I need to go to the most high and be like this. Yeah, yeah, I did that. Shouldn't have did that. That's how you can be able to be forgiven. It's something else I want to talk about, but I ain't going to get into it. Dude called me about this last night. You know what I'm saying? It was a Christian dude. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't a real fruitful conversation. Well, actually it was, because when I got finished, he ain't had nothing to say. But nevertheless. He said, Thou shalt fear you, who will thou Elohim? This is Deuteronomy 6 and 13. And serve him, and shall swear by his name. You shall not go after other Elohims, of the Elohims of the people which are round about you. For you the Elohim is a jealous Elohim among you, lest the anger of Yahuwah the Elohim be kindled against thee, and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. You shall not tempt Yahuwah your Elohim as you tempted him in Masa. You know how they tempted him in Masa? Y'all know what happened now? That's when they, Masa is in the, when they went through that Meribah. Water, that water. With that water. Mm -hmm. They was tempting him saying, can you make this water go? Oh, they were trying him, right? Come back to Mark 15. That's the same thing they were doing to Mashiach on the tree. They were trying him. They was tempting him. See, if they would have known the law, they would have known not to do that. Y'all follow what I'm talking about? They would have known not to do that. See, we'll look at Acts chapter 13, about verse 42 and say. We finished this Mark 15 and 33, though. He said, when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Yahushua cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which is to be interpreted, my Elohim, my Elohim, why hast thou forsaken me? So you see that, he said, you can't go out free until that seventh year, and you got to pay nothing. He said, but Jubilee is the sounding of a trumpet. We know he cried that out like a trumpet. Because why do we know this? Isaiah 58 and 1 says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Show my people their transgressions, and so the house of Jacob they sins. Even when he was up there, he said, it is finished. Because I've given you rest. Which in, and in Jubilee, what did you get? Rest. You know what I'm talking about? From all your debts. Everything that you owe, you were relieved of that. You know what I'm saying? So when he's sitting here looking at he buying a Hebrew servant, we know Leviticus 25 say the children of Yasharai are my servants. We know that Mashiach has purchased us with his blood to be what? 
his servants. So in order for him to be able to do that, to let you go free out for nothing, what does he have to do? He got to lay his life down. Because he said you went out for nothing. See, look at this. Uh, John 3 and 13. You know the only thing we got to give up to serve the man? And we'll look at uh, Luke chapter 9 and about verse 20. It might be a little lower. Well, she's going to hurt herself. She's just one little packet, that's all. Be happy somebody wants you. Everybody wants you. I don't think so. Do you want him? You want him? Dwight say everybody wants him. You want him? She say she's straight. You, my friend, have been shown to be incorrect. No, 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 no. Because she still, uh, <laughs> she wants me as a friend. Oh, she said, he said, he said, yeah, he said, no, 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 he said no, no, no. as a friend. A friend. He got you there. I didn't see, see, I knew that's what he was doing when he said everybody. I knew he wasn't talking about like in that fashion. Because see, his daughter that came over here just crying, just want to give him a hug. Say, hey, be happy somebody wants you. Say everybody wants you. But I know this here. There's somebody who doesn't like you. It doesn't want to be your friend. Yeah, I didn't get no reasons why. It's hey, hey, look here, man. One thing about it, man. I done told y'all before. I don't care nothing about a hater. They're going to keep on having their nuts crossed and they're going to have testicular cancer, legions everywhere. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? You're going to sit by around here? Funny. Chemotherapy is not going to help. Yeah, <laughs> 3 and 13. He say, and no man hath ascended up to Shamahim, but he which come down from Shamahim, even the son of man which is in Shamahim. And Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For, for Elohim so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For Elohim sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. So his whole purpose was to redeem his brethren so they would no longer be slaves. Go to Nehemiah chapter 5, because that just hit my mind. And after we look at Nehemiah chapter 5, you can get your Matthew chapter 23, because there's something that goes along with that. Nehemiah 5 and verse 5. He said, uh, I don't think we're going to actually get to the point that you made, bro. I don't know if I'm going to make it around now. You start off with it. <laughs> I had to start off with something else for you. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm going to get around to it. Yep, I'm deal with it another day. You should deal with it when you're going to deal with it <laughs> Hey, man, I just go the way the, the, way the wind blows. Yeah, I hate you. I got to go the way the wind blows. Yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren. Our children as their children. Lo, we bring into bondage our sons and daughters to be servants. And some of our daughters are brought into bondage already. Neither is it in our power to redeem them, for other men have our lands and vineyards. And I was very angry when I heard their cry in these words. Then I consulted with myself, and I rebuked the nobles and the rulers, and said unto them, You exact ushery every one of his brother. And I said a great assembly against them. And I said unto them, We after our ability have redeemed our brethren, the Yahudim, which were sold unto the heathen. And will you even sell your brethren? Or shall they be sold unto us? Then held they their peace and found nothing to answer. So what this going in is, is that they had done freed the people. And you know what they had done turned around and did? Took them back into bondage. You know what I'm saying? Now you come over here and look at Matthew 23 and look at what he said with the scribes and the Pharisees about them doing the same thing. See, I have to start this way about the bondage because in order to be free from the bondage, something got to happen first. Before you can actually get that all to be pushed through your ear, to symbolize being circumcised in your ear, something got to happen for that come. Because you're going to have to be set free. And you're only going to be set free by one thing. For your ear to even be open to be able to hear. 23. And about verse 13. Matter of fact, make it 10. He says, Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even a masha. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. 
But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of Shamahim against the men, for neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye that are entering to go in. Now we know we just talked about this the other day. This we're talking about when we were coming into the land, how those men who didn't believe, who we just read about in number 14, were shutting up that kingdom to those who were trying to get in because they weren't trying to get in. One of the things you'll always be able to tell is if somebody who's preaching the word is, are they preaching it so you can be able to get in? Because when you look at most Israelites who teach the word, they're not trying to get in, and they're not going to give you no information for you to get in. See, I was talking to Jamel about it earlier. I've seen Hebrew dudes do this. That they feel like we've been a part of it. Me and you, actually, with your homeboy who liked the boys. A, a dude will see that you got a piece of information that he don't have or he don't know. And he mad that you know it. And he don't want you to talk about it in the open. So he will do whatever he can do to discredit what you talking about. So other people can't receive it. Because he don't want to get in and he don't want you to get in. You know what I'm saying? When you see somebody who did them, that's the same thing what we're looking at as somebody is. He say we done redeemed our brethren. It was after our ability. It was after Mashiach's ability to lay his life down to free his brethren. He was not going to turn around and sell them back into bondage. See, we're going to look at something. And just hold on. You can go ahead and get it. Don't go there yet, but go ahead and get it. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and about verse 5. And then get you Galatians chapter 2 and about verse 15. You know what I'm saying? Because we know from 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and 16, it say where the Ruach of Amashiach is, there is liberty. So we know Amashiach is coming to free the captive. That's what Jubal, that's what we read about in Exodus 21. That's what the whole thing is about. A Hebrew servant. Well, he say he that commits sin is the servant of sin. That's the same thing to say in Romans 6 and 16. We'll read that in a moment. We got to sit back and look at what you're going to be a slave to. See, before we even get to the all being put through your ear because you pleased with your master, we have to sit back and look at we were a slave to the world and our flesh before that. So in order for you to be made free, something had to happen. This man had to die. Then the word had to be preached. So him dying and his blood being shed would be the beginning of freeing you. But before that freedom could be made, as we done read, you believe me, rams on a cornet or trumpet, the trumpet had to be blown. The same way we looked at that on memorial trumpets, when we seen that he was that trumpet, blowing the horn over the sacrifice and all that. Same thing yet again. Look at the second Timothy 3 and 7. 3 and 5, I should say. Make sure that's what I want. And it is, sir. See, that's the same thing when you look at the people who were in the wilderness. They had a form of God. They wanted to seem that way. See, when you look at David, he didn't have a form. He did that with Bathsheba. When he was rebuked, he repented of the behavior. He never did it again. You know what I'm saying? Remember, I told you that's godly uh -huh. repentance, which move under sorrow, which is not to be repented of because godly repentance or godly sorrow lead to salvation. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know, y'all know somebody who can cut the water on and cut them off. That's not godly sorrow. Because when you move to God, it's all right. You can't, you can't cut that on and off. You know what I'm saying? I know I can't. Well, my auntie died. Boy, I couldn't cry. And I wanted to. You know what I'm talking about? And what? Nothing coming out. You know what I'm saying? I'm like this here. Some niggas need to go and get them a check somewhere. Go and work for Miramar or somebody. Because, boy, you can do that right there, boy. Somebody need to be paying you. Well, you can cut them on and off. How many of y'all been able just to cut tears on on command? I remember listening to a Nirvana song back in the day. He said, you know, I can cry on command. Well, you can cry on command. You good, boy. You good. You know what I'm saying? But also, that, that kind of scary because that means, boy, well, ain't no truth in you, boy. You can do that on command. I mean, you got that much control of your emotions. and Well, you can do that. That's why you can't trust actors. Because actors are paid liars. An actor is a paid liar. How many of y'all done seen TV shows where they might have an actor who play playing they self and then they fool somebody and be like, see, and they said, I couldn't act. You know what I'm saying? Will Smith is a paid liar. You know what I'm saying? Uh, who was that? Ben Affleck, paid liar. I get, they, get played, they get paid to play make-believe for a living. 
I get paid to pretend to be something that I'm not. Mm. And I got to convince you that this is who I am. Yeah. That's true. That's like the bro talking about that. Uh, yeah. The one who played the new Willy Wonka. What's his name is? Oh, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp was talking about that. How he got to like. Become the character. got to become that. Yeah. And then he said he never watches Psychotic. movies. Yeah, because he know that's not me. Yeah, what he say? I got to believe. I got to make you believe I'm Willy Wonka. You know what I'm saying? Denzel Washington had to make you believe he was Alonzo. He had to make you believe that. You had never seen him in a role like that. He had to make you believe he was a murderous, crooked cop. He believe his name was John Q as well. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about? You know it's serious because you might end up calling real people by the names of characters from the television show. Look like this here, right? I was watching uh, the highlights. And Mike Tolbert for the Panthers scored a touchdown. And he went to doing the dance that Afonso... Nobody calls Afonso Rivera Afonso Rivera. They just call him Carlton. He went to doing the dance. He said he's doing the Carlton. Because he has convinced you that he is Carlton. You know what I'm talking about? He is Carlton. No, he's not Carlton. He is Carlton. He is Carlton. He's not Carlton. He's Afonso Rivera. He's the boy who was doing the moonwalk and Pepsi commercials with Michael Jackson long before y'all ever heard of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. No, he's not. I guarantee if you walk up to him and call him Carlton Banks, he's going to be like, this here. Call me Carlton one more time, Nicole. I think you got over That's just like... I don't think like this here. You don't know how some of the people be. They could like this here. Everybody, let's, let's take this take this out. I heard he used to hate it. But I, After a while, you get used to it. There's nothing you can yeah, do about I, it. I think you know, I got used to it. Because uh, I, I seen a tweet where he was like. Uh, he can't do nothing about it. No, he, he when, what's his name? He did the, the dance. The dance. Uh, he tweeted. He said, good, oh, I see you or something like that. Or I mean, what know. can he do? He's going. He, that's why you ain't never seen him in too many movies and too many television shows. He can't get another role. All right. Yeah. Got another call. Because all you're going to see is Carlton. I done told y'all this before. Don't nobody call Tiny Lister Jr. Tiny Lister Jr. Debo. He's Debo. This man has been in numerous films. Numerous television. He was a wrestler by the name of Zeus. He wrestled Hulk Hogan for real. Well, the Rock a little different. Well, they call him, but that's actually his nickname. You know what I'm saying? That wasn't a wrestler name because it's... Because he, he was going by uh, Rocky Maivia. I mean, that was his daddy name. That was his nickname. But he has not been pigeonholed to a particular character. Yeah. When he first started Branch it was a little bit. Because you just knew that's The Rock, the wrestler. But he, he's not been character, character out, characterized. They're going to be mad if he's known as The Rock. Dude. No, he's not because he gets paid $30 million just to pop up on WWE. That's like, uh, what? Ain't it though? Ain't it though? The Rock's a mean. Like Maurice Jones Drew, I can never he just he you know what I'm saying? That's, Mojo. that's Mojo, bro. But that's a nickname though. See that's not the same because that's not a character. I don't know, I still, no matter what team he go to, bro. But that's his nickname though. <laughs> but what I'm talking about is actors. They you you'll look at some people. I'm trying to think of a movie. No. Like this here. For some people they see Eddie Murphy, all they're gonna see is Professor Clump. For some people, or Dr. Doolittle. No, I mean for some people, some people don't know Eddie Murphy early in work. Some people don't know his early in work. Some people don't know Beverly Hills Cop. Beverly Hills Cop is before some of y'all time. Yeah, it's on Netflix. Hilarious. You know what I'm saying? 48 Hours is before some of y'all time. Watch that TV. Hilarious. You know what I'm saying? You know, Coming to America is before some of y'all time. You may have seen it, but it's before your time, though. And most people, like people your age, will not identify with that Eddie Murphy. They gonna identify with Norbert. You know what I'm saying? They gonna identify with Doctor Doolittle, cause that's the only Eddie Murphy they ever seen. They ain't seen that Eddie Murphy wrong. Yeah, he just said that Marcus name. <laughs> I've never seen Norbert though. Uh, no, no, that's that's Boomerang. Yeah, Boomerang. Yeah, you know, but that's early '90s. But I'm trying to think of somebody else I can think of who is a character that like. Because there was too many people playing Batman. Now, see, no, because Tyler Perry is just a fan. Any grown man wants to do all that. Martin's friend. The rook Cole. Cole. Yeah, but see, he, he was never really that known, though. Bro, man. Everybody yeah, know bro, man. Everybody know bro, man. And that's what he's going to be known by. But he was in, um, he was in a lot of stuff. Show. 
But he was in a lot of stuff. But, 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 but like I say though, my whole point is, is they job is to convince you they, they. that they that person. Now Mike Epps known for more than they did. For a long time he was. Yeah. Well, he was, daddy. Just like, uh, Cat, Cat was a pimp. Uh, but see, but, I mean, because he liked to see it, though, but he wasn't never just money more than me. That just was a funny nigga. Because the reason being, because I had seen Cat Williams and things before that. Oh, see, I had no, no first. He was used to be on my wife and kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he was. But I thought, so that was before? That was before that. No. no. I thought that was that was after. Man, I watched the kids. Came, I mean, but he would. I knew. I knew who he was before that because you would see them in bit stuff, so you would be familiar with who. They, like I never identified Mike Evans with that, but I can see how it could happen. Oh yeah, everybody know that. You know what I can see how it could happen. But let's read this second Timothy three and five. I'm just using that as an example. I'm having a home. You know what I'm saying? You sit back and look at a lot of kings of Yashara, like Amaziah had a form of God. You know what I'm saying? But when he defeated the Edomites, he ended up worshiping they, worshiping they go. They had to leave him alone. It says, uh, verse 6, For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Jans and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Now, I had just been talking to T about this here the other day. Reprobate is a serious, serious statement to say about somebody. Mm -hmm. Now, we know from Jeremiah chapter 6, he said, Reprobate silver when men shall call them because Yah has rejected them. Mm -hmm. Now, when Yah rejects somebody, he's going to turn you over to the lust of your own heart. Listen. He said, Like you didn't like to retain me in your knowledge. He said, I'll give you over to a reprobate mind to do those things that are not convenient. So when he say reprobate concerning the faith, that means worthless. That means you don't serve no purpose. Now, if people want to, how do I know if I'm reprobate? If you know you ain't supposed to be having sex and you do it anyway. But you say you believe though. If you know you shouldn't steal, but you steal anyway. You know you shouldn't hate, but you hate anyway. Because he told you the things he'll give you over to. Covenant breakers. Maliciousness, spiteful, you know what I'm saying? The backbiting, lasciviousness, fornication, sex with the same sex. You'll find yourself in a continual behavior of doing things the man say not to do. Mm. That's when you actually know that you reprobate. Because those people who were in the wilderness, they were reprobate concerning the faith. They were worthless because they actually didn't believe. And they thought just being out here, they would be straight. That's why they were willing to tempt the man. That's why the people, when you turn around and you look at look at Judas, he was stood a Masha. And he ended up being met reprobate concerning the faith. Because he sat right there with that man. And he heard all that word and went against it. He had no problem turning on the man and betraying him to be killed. He didn't have a problem with it. What was the other thing that I mentioned? Galatians, I believe. Pretty clear. I appreciate you, sir. Galatians 2 and 13. Thank you, sir. And uh, actually, two and about sixteen. Okay, you, you. So, pay you with what? I'm waiting on the paycheck. I can pay you for that, though. Hello. Hey, how you doing? You all right? Somebody sound like they sound like somebody got the sniffles. But 2 and 15, 16, pardon me. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the Torah, but by the faith of Yahushua HaMashiach, even we have believed in Yahushua HaMashiach, that we might be justified by the faith of Mashiach, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Mashiach, we ourselves also are found sinners, as therefore the Mashiach, the minister of sin, Elohim forbid. So you know the key thing, if we're seeking to be justified by Mashiach, that means that we would do like Paul said in Ephesians, we would hear of him and we would learn of him. So now we're sitting back looking at, if you not, if you found that, that means the minister, meaning did he teach you to do that? So if somebody said, oh, I'm not growing, or it's your fault I'm not growing, is it my fault, or is it the fault that you didn't want to hear it? That you didn't take what you were. How many times y'all done heard me say you got to lay this stuff and put it in your heart? Look at you know what? You know, it could be times where you know, right, all right, I'm not going to execute like I should. 
It don't even got to be to commit sin or nothing. Just like this here, just I, I should have did it like this here. I know I should have did it like this here, but I can get that right and do it the next time. But that means because you laid it to heart. But that's a sign of being reprobate when you hear it and then you ain't getting no gain from it because you still going to do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. And then you sit back, well, I'm not wrong. Because I'll take it a case of point in the individual that stated it. They weren't just listening to me. They were listening to somebody else along with me. And you still was doing the same thing. You know what I'm talking about? And, and the word preached on both ends was the same. So then guess what that means? Something's wrong with you. Something's wrong with you. You're not actually taking what you hear and you're not laying it to your heart. It's not activating inside of you. That means you obviously you are not a Hebrew servant who was set free. You know what I'm saying? When that horn got blew for Jubilee for you to be set free, you ended up staying behind. You ended up staying a slave. You didn't want to be free. You would have to been one of the few idiots. We don't know if, any, if every Hebrew did it. We hope that they all did. But you would have been one of the idiots that didn't put the blood on the dope hole. That's what you did. You was an idiot. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. That's too much work. If they kill us, they kill us. They don't. They don't. Mm. Now, I say we'll deal with that later in the week. What I told you about the other day, when we talking about that Roman chapter 6, we're going to deal with that later in the week. I got a feeling you'll mention something before I come behind you and be able to tell you that. Now, let's look at verse 18. He said, For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law that I might live under Elohim. I am crucified with Mashiach. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Mashiach lived in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of Elohim, who loved me and gave himself for me. That's nothing. He done hurt the baby. He done hurt the baby. He did it to the baby. You can't tell the difference between his pride and, and the love? No, no, they started, they started the same way. I hear that. Come on, Lynn, what is the problem? I said they do. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. That's fine. I just had a brother ask me about that the other day, uh, Dominique. Uh, so when you sit back and you look at it, right? We sit back seeking. We seeking to be justified by the faith of Mashiach. So that means while we seeking to be justified by that faith, that means we know that our, our lifestyle need to be in line with it. You know what I'm talking about? To get it in line, to get it lock, stock, and barrel so we can be 100% where we want to be. You know what I'm saying? Because even he was it mentioned to me that, uh, hold on. So when we look at that, right, and we get to seek the understanding of what we're seeking on, this man came to set us free. He came to set you free from being a slave. The only way he could do that is to come out for nothing. Because that's why we read the Most High Love the World. There was no sacrifice that you could give. Hold on. Psalm 51. Now that I said it. That you came out for nothing. That didn't come to my mind. Let me make sure it's Psalm 51 that I need. It ain't Psalm 51 to the D 25. Get that Psalm 51 at about verse 15. Let me see a 25 or more. Come on, Leah. Psalm 51 and 15 would be good tonight. He saw, O Master, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desire not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delight not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of Elohim are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O Elohim, thou wilt not despise. You heard what David said? He said, sacrifice you don't desire, else I would give. You don't got nothing that you can give. You're going to come out to be free for nothing. Because it was the blood that Amash, he had to give it. That's why he said, I, I won't frustrate the grace of Elohim. Amashiach done died in vain because he has given his life for me. You didn't have to give anything. Get this Luke 9 and 20. Let's we'll see what 20 says. 23 might be what I want specifically, but let's see what 20 says. Listen to what he said. He said unto them, But who say ye that I am? Peter answering said, The Mashiach of Elohim. He straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing. 
saying the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. So the only thing you're going to have to give up is you. Because he didn't already paved the way for you to be free. You didn't have to do nothing. Come on back to Exodus 20. So when we look at verse 3, right? Exodus 21 and 3, right? He say, if he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master have given him a wife, and she have borne him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her, master, her masters, he shall go out by himself. And if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door or unto the doorpost. And his master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. Now we turn around and look at it, right? We know in Masha, I say, my father's giving me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. Now we know that they actually, he said they'll bring him to the judge. We know they actually, because the old ain't nothing but an iron pig. Now we know that they didn't actually put an old through a Mashiach's ear. Because he said, if he don't want to go out free and I'll be my master, he said, go ahead and put this through my ear. Now they didn't go through his ear, but it went through his hands and his feet. And going on that wood, at that door. The same way that dope, that dope symbolized when you came up out of Egypt and he was the door and you had to put the blood on the side just like if he was up there on that tree. The same way when you look at, oh, what I did, Judges 19, when that concubine got killed and she fell down at the doorpost just like this here. When you sit back and look at Amashiach, the Amashiach the say, I'm my father's. Because remember, said, I bring you unto the judges. The judges were the chief priests and scribes who rejected him because they judged him and said he was a blasphemer because he said he was the son of the Most High, right? So since he said that, then he was sitting back letting it be known, I belong to my master because my power is Yahuwah, whom you say is your power, who is my father, my honor, right? So he said, go ahead and bore that hole through me because uh, I want to stay here. The reason why he said he wanted to stay here, look what he said he'd have to say. He said, I plainly love my master, my wife, and my children. I will not go free. Didn't we just already read, Allah, he so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son because he loved us enough. See, come over here to 1 John chapter 3. See, he loved us enough to be a slave to righteousness. Because he said, a sacrifice I don't want, or else I give it. He said, the sacrifice is Allah, he is a broken heart and a contrite spirit. That he won't despise, right? Well, we know Amashiach was broken when he was finna die, right? He humbled himself real nice like because He said, Father, let thy will be done, not my will be done. Let possible, don't let this cup pass. Then we can, you can get your Philippians 2 and 5. Go along with you, 1 John chapter 3. Go along right along with it. So you got to sit back and realize, right? He said if he got a wife and child, we know who his wife is, right? It's Yasharal. We know who his children are, which goes back to what I was talking about, about children being the fruit of the womb, which is those who are born of him. First John chapter 3. Actually, it's First John chapter 4, which I desire. And it's about verse 10. Is it 9 Make it seven. First John 4 and 7. He say, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of Elohim, and everyone that love is born of Elohim and know Elohim. So the first thing we know is, the first thing we ought to do is keep the man commandments. That's love. Then by product of that, we would love each other. That's why he washed his disciples' feet, and he said, you ought to serve one another. See, this is why Nehemiah was hot and assembled a great congregation against the leaders of the people because they didn't love one another, because they didn't want the people actually to be free. They wanted to keep them captive. See, the thing when we sit back, he said, he shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Because if you'll know the truth, that means you'll know y'all's instructions, you'll know your word, and that will set you free. This is why you would be willing to come out free as a Hebrew servant for nothing. All right, then, little mother. He said, he that love not, know not Elohim, for Elohim is love. And this was manifested, the love of Elohim towards us, 
Because that Allah he sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Do you not realize that? He said, this is the judgment that I set before you. The judgment to set you free is a Mashiach freeing you from being a slave. But we talking about that Romans 6 and 16, which I ain't got to yet, which is being a slave to sin to turn around and be a slave to what? Righteousness. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is the same way he had an all bore through his ear because he loved his master, he loved his father, and he loved his wife, and he loved his kids, and he didn't want to be separated from them. He said, if they can't come out with me, then I'm going to stay with them. That's why he said he came to his own, and his own received him not. See, that was the mercy of the Most High to manifest his son in the flesh to be a bond man with his wife and kids. Yeah. And when he came out, he didn't want to leave his wife and kids behind. You know what I'm saying? He said, well, guess what, man? I love my master. Nail me to this wood. Man. Nail it to me. Because they got to come. If they, if, 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 if they can't come with me, then I'm going to stay with them. Which is why he coming back forward then. So then we look at about verse uh, 10, right? Hearing his love, that not that we loved Elohim, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if Elohim so loved us, we are also to love one another. That goes back to what I was talking about. You know, it's a lot of crazy stuff been going around, and you sit back and you didn't actually see how people actually feel about other people. They actually didn't really love the people who they claim that they love. But that don't mean that you come back and return hatred back for their love. See, that's what Amashiach said when he was being prophesied of by David and Saul. He said, for my love, they gave me back hate. Some of y'all have experienced that. For your love, hate was returned. When you did good, they gave you evil back. But if we're going to be the sons of the Most High, then guess what you turn around to do? You turn that other cheek. They gave me evil, I give them good. That's what Amashiach would tell him when he say, turn the other cheek. If he said, if they take your cloak, coat, he say, let them go ahead and get it. He said, if they smite the cheek, give them the other. Reason being because they will get rewarded for what they did. You know, Jezebel sat back and killed all the prophets. You know what I'm talking about? Was slaying them. And guess what happened to her? She got killed. And there was nothing left of her but bones. And dogs licked up her blood. You know what I'm saying? And guess what? Nobody or their families had to avenge this woman or nothing. Y'all got her. You know what I'm saying? Saul did what he did. Ain't nobody have to go get Saul. Y'all got it. You know what I'm talking about? He died at the hand of the uncircumcised. Y'all remember that? And got hung up on a tree just like a marsh y'all too, didn't he? And you know brothers miss all of that. But the point of what I'm talking about, that's what that means. Just because somebody, now I'm going to tell you like this here because I've been explaining this to T because sometimes you don't realize this here. Once, and I told you this other day, if a nigga cross you one time, they shouldn't be able to cross you ever again. Because they should never be able to get close enough to you ever again to cross you. You know what I'm saying? That don't mean I don't love you. That don't mean I might not ever deal with you again in life. But I got to deal with you with a long handle spoon. I know I can't deal with you like this or like that or like this or like that. Because you ain't got but one time to cross me. You ain't got but one time to show me your character and show me what type of person you are and what type of time you're on. You ain't got but one time to do that. You know what I'm saying? I'll tell you another thing too. Just cause I know some of y'all better. And you got to be worried. You, you got to watch people that just come up out the blue and try to manipulate your thought process of how to look at somebody. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you know something been going on. Like Perry was telling me, like, yeah, I was told this, but then I seen it was this. You know what I'm saying? Even T said the same thing with her people. She was told this, but then when she talked to T, she seen it wasn't like what I was told. You know what I'm saying? That's because that's when somebody got an agenda. You have to be careful with that. Because sometimes they can come back and they're trying to paint a picture. Usually they'll try to paint the picture to make it seem more advantageous to them. And they usually hope that you won't go talk to the other person or other parties involved. Look, you over here <laughs> Woo! Come over here to this song. Stay. Thank you, Troy. 112. Whoa, he's trying to blame it on Troy. Psalms 127, my father. I think she pooped. 127 and 3. Because we already know you have to his wife, right? Because we know you can't be married to another unless your husband be dead. Yeah. 
We know the only way we was a he was able to free us from that law because Amashiach died so we could be married unto another, so we could go out free with him, right? <laughs> Calm down, Elizabeth. He say, Lo, children are the heritage of Yahuwah, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As an arrow in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that have a quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Now you see he say the heritage. Children are the heritage of Yah. It's not funny. Let's look at that Romans 6 and 16 now. We'll get that Philippians 2 and 5 in a minute. I'm going to shut this thing down. Bro. Baby done farted and ran him off. See around here grown people. Well, you know it's here. He had to spray. That's a baby. Girl, what you got no, in you? Lizzie poop. Lizzie. Oh, Lizzie poop. Oh, come on, Lizzie. 6 and 16. Know ye not that to whom you yield your, yield your service to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. So we had to sit back and look at it, right? My shall say, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free, right? So then we had to sit back and look at it. What are we going to continue to be a slave to? A slave to the Ruach or a slave to the flesh? Because the Masha came to free you as a slave for you to come out with nothing because you were bought with the price. That price was his blood. That freedom was achieved on the stake when he cried out because he let that know that it was Jubilee. How do we also know that? Because when he rose from the dead, other people rose with him. They came out for nothing. The only thing it cost him was to give themselves up and serve y'all. That's all it cost him. It didn't cost us nothing to come up out of Mizraim other than to put the blood of a lamb on your doorpost. It didn't cost you nothing. Matter of fact, the Most High provided a lamb for you to do it. You know what I'm saying? It ain't going to cost you nothing to come out of the world and come out of sin because he's already provided a lamb for you to do it. You didn't have to give up nothing. Everything that you needed to be able to execute what you want to do as far as your salvation was served, you didn't have to produce nothing. The only thing you had to produce is the will and desire to want to serve him. That's all you got to have. That's all you got to have. An ear to want to hear. Which we'll get to that later. I'm not going to get to that today. 17. But Elohim be thank that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. You see that right there? He said you obeyed from where? From the heart. Because the word preached didn't profit them that heard it, not being mixed with the faith in them that heard it. Because he said, man make confession and believe from the heart. That's what Paul told you in Romans chapter 10. Even in the law, he said that you don't say that we got to go here to get the word or here to get the word. He said the word is already with you. Like Paul stated, this is the word of faith which we preach, which means you got to believe. I'm going to tell you something, man. Like Paul said in, in that. 1 Corinthians 13, you can have all the love, you can give your body to be burned, you can have prophecies, you can understand all mysteries. He said, but if I lack love, I'm nothing. So Paul said, well, I can break down the Mashiach from this point to that point. I can feed all these hungry people. I can give my body up to be killed. But if I don't love y'all, and if I don't believe, because to love y'all, you got to believe. I'll tell you something. I done talked to y'all about this before. You can't marry somebody you don't believe and you don't trust. What type of marriage would that be? Horrible. Horrible marriage. That goes both ways, male or female. That's what I'm saying. Like I said, I trust him. I believe, I believe that she is exactly who she says she is. I trust her. I wouldn't marry a woman I didn't trust. If I got if I got to worry about is she going to talk to this nigga or is she going to do this, it's not nobody you need to marry. If you worry about it, he going to sleep with this woman or sleep with that woman, that ain't nobody you need to marry. If you don't believe the words that are coming out of their mouth, why would you want to be with him? What? Bye bye. You know what I'm saying? I'm serious though. See, that's what messed them up in the wilderness. They didn't actually believe the words of Yah that was coming out of his mouth. The same way they didn't believe the word that Amashiach was speaking. So there was never a way that they could ever be joined to him. Y'all know, I, I tell you, man, it's two things. You know, we know we got to live right. That's a gift. We know we got to follow the man's instructions. That's a gift. But the biggest thing that I've always preached from the time I done started to this very moment is you got to believe. You got to sincerely and earnestly out of your heart believe that there is a reward for doing what the man told you to do. 
You got to earnestly believe that everything he said he would do, he going to do it. If you don't have that heart of faith like Abraham had, you starve. You know what I'm saying? That's why the key thing, that's why he said he that believe and is baptized. You understand what I'm telling you? Because there's a lot of people who've been baptized. I'm not talking about it in the name of Jesus either. I'm talking about whether it's Yeshua or Yahushua, but they did not in truth believe. See, I already can see that a certain people think if you baptize, then after that, automatically you're just going to get the Ruach right after that. You know what I'm saying? They feel like, well, I'm keeping some commandments and I'm doing this here, but you don't believe nothing that you hear. This is why people don't change and this, that, because you don't actually believe it. Like I can tell you, like I can remember when Little Muffin would look, I told her, hey, that iron hot, don't put your hand on it. That iron hot, don't put your hand on it. When she actually went and put her hand on that iron, and she looked at me and said, it's hot. I said, yeah, I told you. And you know what she did after that? Every time she seen that iron, hot. 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 She believed that iron was hot after she put her hand to it. You know what I'm saying? You know when some of these boys run out here in these streets? They don't believe them white folks got a place for them. Say, you ever been to the booty house? Say, they got room for you at the booty house. And what he told them to do? Invited them to a penny. He said, that's how it started. But you know what the problem is? Dudes don't believe that they got room for them at the booty house. You know what I'm saying? They don't believe they gonna put you behind them razor wire. Y'all know y'all know some gents who've been out here running these streets wild, and then they end up getting caught, and they don't believe nothing to the white folks saying, we sit and shoot the 25 years in the Florida Department of Correction. They believe it then. I'm just sitting there, man, you ain't right. No, you ain't right, because you know you had armed robbery and carjacking. You know you should have got more than them 25. I seen a dude get off of eight years for carjacking, turned it down, they gave him 20. I said, boy, you supposed to took them eight years and flew up out of here. Carjacking? Well, that's a life sentence, bro. You know you did that because you know what it was? <laughs> you didn't believe that the <laughs> white folks was going to give you more than eight. <laughs> I ain't playing with no carjacking. Just like you said, some of y'all know your mama told you to clean your room or whoop your behind. You didn't clean it. She got in the house, though. She whooped your behind. You believed it in. You believed it in. That same thing. Ain't no difference. Let's look at it about verse 19. Or verse 18. Listen what he tells you. Being then made free from sin, you become the servants of righteousness. And what was you believe about? Freeing you from a debt. Because most of the time, if a Hebrew became a servant, because he owed some money. He owed some money. And we turn around and look like all the sin we had done committed, we owed y'all. So instead of you paying the payment, I'll kill my son and he'll make the payment and he'll set you free and he gonna take his wife and his kids with him. Let's look at Philippians 2 and 5. I ain't doing nothing but trying to stir uh, Troy mind up a little bit. You gonna be ready, Troy? Mm -hmm. He talking about, hmm. I don't sound like he gonna be ready to do it with that right there, though. Sorry, I need to sleep on and it don't. They call me in class. Like they said, what? What? What you say? Huh? <laughs> what? Happened? Hold on, I gotta read it off the app. I grabbed the wrong book. Thought I had the right one. <laughs> grabbed the wrong one. You going tonight? Huh? I said you going tonight. He gonna go Friday, probably Saturday afternoon. Too. Nah, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't even finna go down. He like this here. I'd let him go first if that's the case. He said, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Yahushua Hamashiach, who being in the form of Allahim, thought it not robbery to be equal with Allahim, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. He became a bond man. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Go ahead and nail me to the doorpost. Bring me to the doorpost and put the ball all through my ear because I'm content with my master. And I want to be with my wife and my kids, right? Wherefore, Elohim also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. But in the name of Yahushua, every knee should bow of the things in Shamahim and the things in earth and the things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Yahushua HaMashiach is master to the esteem of Elohim the Father. So his whole purpose was to free you. 
That's why he said the true son. He said, if you, he said, if you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and the truth shall set you free. We look at that jubilee, that freedom, that releasing from debt. You know what I'm saying? That's what we want to sit back and look at, that we seeking to be released from a debt. Right? That's good right there, though. Praise y'all for you, Sean Michelle. We'll pick it up towards the end of the week. Because you know what I told you about with Romans 6 when we were talking the other day. I'm going to wait on that. Y'all all right on their phone? I appreciate it.